Darlings, it's Mummy, Sybil Brunchen, and I'm coming to you from my front driveway garden, which uh, got very, very crazy this year with its um, its disheveled look. Mummy had made a wish uh, that she would have a wild garden. Um, I didn't say a country garden, I don't think. I said a wild garden, and I got more than I wanted. Um, obviously, for those of you that follow my Tourette's, you uh, know that at the beginning of the spring, the peonies, which grew to be five feet tall, were nothing more than a, a cluster of little shoots. The irises, which ended up being everywhere, and most of them not blooming over on this side, um, were little shoots. So Mummy went out and dropped a fortune on flowers, at the local nursery and planted them in here and didn't know that things that like the little cute Shasta daisies there that are so forlorn would be buried underneath all this foliage. I mean, there was no rhyme or reason to the tall things, the short things, the inv invasive things, whatever. So I did the best I could. There were surprises. There were things that thrived that I've never had luck with. Audratums, for instance. Look at these audratums. They've just, <laughs> they did beautifully. Mexican gold did beautifully. Blanket flower. I have been doing blanket flowers in pots out on Fire Island. Never did well. Here they are, gorgeous. Um, I did uh, calabraqua and just all sorts of things. And it was interesting, uh, coreopsis. It, it was interesting to see what grew and what didn't grow. Um, so anyway, there's, you know, it's... <laughs> It's so funny how it works out. There are echinaceas I put in late that I, I hope will come back. Here's echinaceas that I rescued from a garden center that was throwing them away. And I'm going to put those in and hope that those come in. Um, anyway, I've been topiarying and, and bonsaiing my, my little uh, bushes out in front, which were suffering so badly. Um, irises that, oh, look at this. This iris that a neighbor gave me that was in a pot on her backyard, she gave it to me and I planted it here. They were pale yellow irises and not only did they bloom beautifully, beautifully um, once I put them in, but then look, I have a second a second throw of flowers. It's been chilly, so I don't know if they're going to complete, but I'll tell you one thing. I couldn't believe that this iris that came out of a pot went into the end of the driveway in that soil. This is the soil we were given clay and rocks and it did that well as you can see i'm grooming my irises but um i just wanted to show you there's different things i'm going to put in some crocus bulbs etc etc i'm going to plant this i'm going to sort of move things around which i never do i don't believe that gardeners should be digging up and replanting and trying to make the choices right the first time around well I didn't know about my choices, but I certainly will be more careful next year. But one thing I did want to show you, and you know how mummy's terrified of bugs. Oh my God, I'm terrified of bugs. There's one of my pumpkins and it's in my front, on my front porch. And now this is what I want to show you. What's on my pumpkin. <laughs> it's not a praying mantis. It's a walking stick. Can you see it? Yeah, I, I don't know that I want it to move around. Um, at first, I just thought it was some strange leafy thing, um, but I went over to it and I put my glasses down and the walking stick immediately um, jiggled a little bit as if to say, please don't um, put those glasses there. <laughs> so there I am with a walking stick out of my own garden. I wish Mr. Bisqui was here, my little chipmunk. Um, he's hiding under the steps in the porch right now. That's where he lives during the winter. Um, but there's a walking stick, which... You talk about Halloween. I mean, if that isn't Halloween right there. <laughs> and Halloween's one of my very favorite things in the world. Um, it's the only thing I think Martha Stewart and I have in common. Is It's almost our favorite holiday. Um, <laughs> but it just, I mean, I just, I'm sorry. I'm laughing through this. I just, I think it's so funny that nature and the universe conspired and said, oh yeah, you love Halloween so much. Here, have a little horror in your front yard. It's a wonder that I actually, I was just about to pick the pumpkin up. I'm telling you right now, if that walking stick had jumped on me, I would have been like a screeching thing. The poor pumpkin would have been in pieces all over the driveway. So, um, oh well, there it is. So, um, <laughs> I'm going to get out of here. Uh, by the way, my honeysuckle did not 
to thrive. It was doing really well. It's doing really well up here, although it's a little mildewy now that it's cold and damp and not very sunny, but it's not doing very well. My periwinkle, on the other hand, is doing very well under there, and I'm going to encourage it to cover this whole area and grow. Uh, my hydrangea, yes, Troy Garza, hydrangea, 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 um, is doing well. It's got a little bit of rust on it, but I'm going to cut it back, and you know, if that's how well it did this year, I'm sure it'll do better next year. So irises, I groomed them. I'm going to regroom them again. Although even these irises are sending up new shoots. It's really interesting. I wonder if I shocked them by grooming them. Although I didn't shock, I didn't groom that one. And and those second, that second throw of irises came up. Um, you could see my bird feeder is half empty. My birds are really going at it. Although my cat birds haven't come back for the suet yet. I don't know what, but I think this looks better than it did. And when I sweep up and, and clean up the ground and then plant some things under these hedges, I think they'll be very attractive. Again, it's the end of October. And you know, what am I expecting? Oh, thank you, by the way, for the advice on the flowering quince. I'm hoping it's flowering quince. I lopped off the tops in the spring. Look at those thorns. Aren't they terrifying? I mean, that's right out of Sleeping Beauty's forest. Uh, I'm hoping that they along with the daisies, will um, come back thick and full next year and uh, be nice. And I'm going to try and se uh, seed my marigolds. My marigolds did unbelievably well over here. So I'm hoping that they'll self-seed. This whole area, this is north. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm facing south. This is north. This is south. So the whole garden right now is cast in shadows. I wish it was sunny so you'd see. The sun which usually is all the way up to here, is now all the way out there. And everything is in shade. So these plants are now struggling through, like, shade. And I'm amazed they've done as well as they have. So I'm going to have to be careful about where I pl place the echinacea, the blanket flower, everything else. I'm going to have to sort of know that, you know, by, by September, the sun has stopped about here in the garden. It's still sunny out there, but the sun slowly, like a sundial, begins to go, and then this gets more and more shady. Consequently, that's why all the lily of the valley up again, and the, the Japanese painted fern, all of this does so well because this is basically in shade almost all the time. There's a little morning sun from the east and a little evening sun from the west right here. But, you know, basically this area up against the, the railing is in shade. That's why the mandevilla and the, and the begonias and everything do well up in there. So I'm going to be clever next year now that I've lived here a year and we'll see what happens, you know, if mummy's even still alive next year uh, and some walking stick hasn't scared the crap out of me. Look at, oh, he's moved just since we were here. I, do you want to see him move? All right, I'll try. I, this is really not where I'm at. <laughs> oh, well. I, I really would rather, if you don't mind, I shan't want to touch him just to get him to move for you. But he's def definitely changed his position. I think he's sort of lifted himself off and looking down at my glasses as if to say, what the hell are those? Anyway, all right. Talk to you all later, darlings. Darlings, <laughs> remember what I always say. It's important for you to remember to be in the world and of the world. It's important for you to always be present to be mindful and to be grateful because everything you see and smell and taste and touch and hear and hold in your hand and your heart, all of it is borrowed. Everything is only borrowed. See you later.